Hello, I'm Dan Abina and welcome to Municipal Election Tax Show. On 15th October 2022, we have the election for municipal. And uh, here today, we are at Trench Media and honored to have candidate of Kakitlam mayor position, Adil Gamer, today with us. Adil, thanks to join us. Thank you very much for having me. It's really a delight to be here with you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. For the first question, just uh, I want to um, ask you, in your opinion, what's the biggest challenge um, of uh, Coquitlam City? Thank you for the question. Uh, it's hard to say one particular challenge. And I think there are three essentially important challenges that are integrated with each other. One, what we're hearing from residents is affordability. Um, life has become a lot more expensive to sustain not only uh, uh, partners, but also their children. We're one of the fastest growing cities when it comes to young families. They're choosing Coquitlam for a reason. Um, and so affordability is a major challenge. Um, healthcare, I mean, we're stretched quite thin and there are wonderful opportunities that the city can help by making progress on those challenges. And the third one I believe is attracting businesses to our local economy. We can't really have a vibrant local economy without it depending on the backbone of the city, which I believe are local businesses, mom and pop shops that can come and set up in the city of Coquitlam. Great. You know that uh, in Coquitlam city, just uh, most people are young, just the uh, um, median uh, age is uh, 41.2 years and um, so what's your plan and action plan for nightlife and promoting um, the entertainment engagement to people? Great question. Um, Coquitlam is a fast-growing city. Um, currently a third of our population is under the age of 24. 16 percent are under the age of 14. So clearly we're a very young community. Um, we have not done a good job by attracting businesses and making sure that the city is vibrant. I know as my family immigrated to Coquitlam, leaving the old world where nightlife was part of who you are and having a sense of community and belonging. When things close down at five o'clock in Coquitlam, you have nothing else to do but essentially go back home and flip on your Netflix or watch TV. And I think that has a negative impact, not only on our own community sense of belonging, but also our mental health to check in on each other, to see each other, just to have eyes on the street. I mean, you know, in Iran and other places, you can just go out in the street and grab a coffee and hear and see a lot of people. It gives you a deep sense of belonging. And so I believe that Coquitlam has been for far too long a bedroom community where people leave the city to go elsewhere for entertainment, for work. And we need to change that. Not only because we have the opportunity financially, economically, but the people that are choosing Coquitlam are coming from all over the world. They are growing from young to seniors that are choosing Coquitlam to be home. And we can do a lot better by attracting businesses, but also um, an economic and an entertainment hub in Coquitlam. Very good. You know that uh, one of the most um, a great coming team in Coquitlam are Iranian people and uh, yes. artists speaking. <laughs> Uh, people. So, um, and as you know, as that uh, there is no community center for uh, Persian or Iranian community. Uh, do you have any plan to facilitate some things for, for this uh, major population of the Kukit law? First of all, Canada is just a gracious and a wonderful country because it has welcomed so many immigrants from all over the world. And each community that establishes roots in Canada, particularly in Metro Vancouver, have always prioritized developing a community center. It's called community because it brings people together. The calm is together and unity. And so the Persian speaking Iranian community is certainly fast growing. Uh, it is a vibrant community, an important community, a backbone of our city. And I would love to see a community center because my understanding is that it's not going to be an exclusive community center, but it's an opportunity for people who are even non-Iranians to be able to learn about the arts, the foods, the culture, the poetry. There's so much richness in there. And the Iranian story as part of the fabric of Canada is only going to make us stronger. How are we going to build a center? Where would it be? Where are we going to finance it? I think that's where it's going to be a very important collaboration between the mayor's office and the Iranian community. Is there an opportunity? Absolutely. Private, public, 
uh, funding. The city could certainly uh, support in at least land, uh, awarding the land, but there's a wonderful opportunity there and certainly a much needed um, uh, space for our Iranian community in Coquitlam. The population of um, Coquitlam city is growing fast. Uh, and uh, what's your plan for uh, housing and also the parking slots and traffic? Yeah, we have built a city, and this is to be honest with you, that is very car dependent, which is why I think you have a lot of people traveling to and from the downtown Vancouver core. We have not done a really good job at developing a city that is walkable, accessible by foot, by wheels, by cycling. Um, and so I think we need to prioritize how do we design our city that it is walkable, that people are connected, not only in the downtown core and the Burquitlam core, where we're seeing a lot of high rises, but also neighborhoods. I mean, we often ignore that neighborhoods have a deep connection with each other. And so the way that we design our city, the way that we collect data around where is the growth and what is the projection of our growth, um, that is a critical component of how do we design a city that is truly for everyone. Great, thank you so much. And you know that more than 200 uh, cities in the world uh, are transforming to smart city. Uh, so um, is there any plan to transforming the Coquitlam to the smart city and just uh, I use the latest and emerging technology on city for management. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. I mean, I don't know how much of your viewers would be aware of what a smart city is, but certainly it is the use of information and communications technology to ensure that government is delivering on the right services, to ensure that the communication with the public is engaging and it is efficient, uh, both in cost and also energy. There are lots of cities across the world have done a wonderful job. Zurich, for example, have used uh, technology to ensure that they dim the lights and streets that don't have a lot of foot traffic, saving up to 70% energy. That's cost efficiency, that's good use of energy. New York City on an annual basis encourages its public to look at ways where the city can better serve its people using technology. And so I don't know what the plan is currently for the city of Coquitlam, but I'll tell you what the hard truth is. Coquitlam is not wired with fiber optics currently. There are certain pockets in Coquitlam where you actually have just one small bar on your, uh, on your phone. So not even having the right Wi-Fi or even telecommunication connection is not on the path of becoming a smart city. What I hope with my administration and new council getting elected is ways that we could use data and engage the public to better inform local government so that we're better able to serve you. Can I give one example? Sure. There are certain cities across the world that have started to use, particularly in the US, something called 311. It is an app that you can download. Vancouver has it. I don't know how effective they use it here, but it's the only one in Metro Vancouver that is currently using it. 311 is an app that you download. And if you were to see a broken sidewalk, you're able to take a picture. And in real time, there's a pin location that informs the uh, city hall that you found an issue with the sidewalk. In real time, there's a date stamp. So then it's publicly available for people to see. And it shows the public how fast or how slow it takes for them to fix it. I love this app because it empowers the public when they see something, they don't point the finger and say somebody needs to do something about it. Instead, they have the power with their phone, get the phone out, and now you've actually been become civically engaged, helping City Hall collect good data and in return, deliver the critical services that we need in the city. I honestly don't think we can do that without having fiber optic across the city. Um, uh, city Hall cons constantly has issues with their own Wi-Fi, let alone getting to a point where we can actually develop a smart city. And then actually, we can just uh, use making the synergy with the mobile mobile operators as well uh, in this regard. It is very important uh, that uh, cities just, uh, the decision-making system of the city just based on the big data and data, data, I mean, that's instead of just um, um, some something traditional. Right. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Behzad Abdi, joining us. Uh, the chairman of Iranian Cultural Association of Tri-City. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, do you have any question from 
um, the community of uh, Persian people? Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Damar. As a member of TCICS family, that you have a plan for community centers because we are fighting more than, uh, I think, eight years mm. for this. Uh, facilities because really we need it not only for us for all the community that they can use it uh, and I have two uh, uh, questions regarding challenges that we are facing in your community uh, considering the uh, growth of the the growth of population in uh, uh, uh what is your plan for infrastructures Good question. Uh, first, thank you for all the work that you're doing in the community. You are a wonderful and a, and, a, and, a, and a strong advocate to ensure that not only at the city level, but the provincial and also at the federal level, that the Iranian people of tri the Tri-Cities have a voice. And so I appreciate all the work that you're doing on behalf of the Iranian community here in, in Coquitlam. Um, Coquitlam has grown ever since the time that my parents immigrated here. They moved here in, in Coquitlam in 1987. Then it wasn't a city, it was actually called the District of Coquitlam. Um, we were about 45,000 people. Uh, currently, we're about 150,000. So we've grown three folds ever since the late 80s. There are certain streets right now that have not been expanded or redeveloped that were built to be neighborhood roads that are now practically highways. They have become main roads where the speed limit is still 30, but you see people driving up to 55 to 60 kilometers. And the reason that I believe this is happening is because we haven't built, to your point and your question, we haven't built the right infrastructure for the growth. Burke Mountain, which is an area that's very familiar, I'm sure to a lot of people in Coquitlam, is expanding at a rate that when it's finally completed, it would be 60,000 people, six zero. That's about more than the city of Port Coquitlam. Two roads lead up there, David and Coast Meridian. One of those roads is actually leading into Poco, Port Coquitlam. So the traffic that's coming down that mountain is actually bleeding into Port Coquitlam, causing that city to have major congestion. It's shocking to me that it seems to be always an afterthought infrastructure, not only physical, like the roads, but also what is called social infrastructure. Are we building enough libraries, community centers, to your point about the Iranian community center? Do we have enough rinks, ice rinks, for a growing sport of hockey as we have young people going into playing these sports, but also outdoor places? It's always an afterthought and has shocked me for time and time again that although we know we're going to continue to grow, there's no slowing down the population growth because it is a special city. But we have to keep up with the infrastructure, and I believe we haven't done a good enough job in that area. You know, it is not just all you know about schools, you know about the hospital. We have only just, we don't have in Quicklam, it's in Port Moody, just one hospital. Yeah. And the population growth is, I think, uh, is going high, high, but properly we don't have infrastructure. Yeah. We don't have schools, we don't have uh, the hospitals. It's very important that uh, I hope you have in your mind for your plans. Yeah. Can I take a couple of minutes to address that? Do we have time? Just uh, a minute. Uh, yeah. Uh, with the infrastructure, uh, we need leadership. And with these complex challenges, it requires collaboration, not only with the municipal government, but also the provincial government and the federal government. I currently serve as the board chair of Douglas College, and we acknowledge that our students at Douglas College needed housing. We didn't wait for the city of New Westminster to offer housing in the market. We went uh, to Victoria to meet with the minister and, and said that this is a priority for us. How do we help support our students? So there was a joint effort with the provincial government to ensure we build student housing. And now it's the biggest project where we're funding student housing. The hospitals need that. Our nurses need housing. And we have an opportunity with partnering with Fraser Health to ensure that we have housing and, and collaborating and building leadership capacity in our community. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question is, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, tries, uh, Kukuitlam, uh, citizens every day commute to other cities like Bernabe, Suri for their works. And it caused traffic jam and a lot of problems for the citizens there. What is your plan for the solving this? Because we don't have enough, uh, you know, uh, companies in our city. We didn't grab, I think, properly. 
yeah. and or city? What's your plan? Good question. I mean, it comes to the earlier point about the bedroom community that Coquitlam has for some, for so long, been proud to be called a bedroom community. We need to shift away from that. And I think part of it is attracting businesses, creating local jobs. Uh, the mayor is the ambassador of the city, the strongest voice to collaborate with various levels of government, but also attract businesses to open up here. And for many people in Coquitlam, they're looking, if you're a small business owner, you're looking for small retail space. And that we don't have abundance of. Whereas you see in Port Moody or Port Coquitlam, a lot of small businesses open up because there's enough uh, space that is small enough for a small business to open up. So part of attracting businesses is A, the mayor is the ambassador. So we need to figure out and understand what are the businesses that we want to attract. Small businesses are the backbone of the economy of Coquitlam. How do we support small businesses? How do we ensure we have retail space? that is within the core areas of Coquitlam people can walk, cycle, or wheel to, or take public transit to. I mean, the reason people are coming to Vancouver so much is that because there's a lot of activity financially, business-wise here. We need to shift that and it takes leadership. It takes an opportunity for a mayor to say, we need to think differently. And how do we bring the various sectors and uh, people to be able to help us see and think anew? Great, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bezat. And uh, if you have uh, any conclusion and uh, direct talk with the people, just please. Sure. Uh, voting should never be taken for granted. My parents left their old world because they were fighting for human rights and the right to vote. And we find ourselves that in the local government, 75% of people don't vote. And for us to see the change that we want in our community, in our city, to have a voice that represents you, to have a voice that understands not only the immigrant story and all the sacrifices that our families and you yourself have made to choose Canada and particularly Coquitlam to be your home. I understand that voice. I have lived that story. It is part of who I am. I'm a father of five wonderful, strong girls that keep reminding me that we need to work hard at making our world and our cities better. I'm running to be your voice. I'm running because I have heard your stories and your hopes and your ideas. And I hope I can count on your vote on October 15. It's been an honor and privilege to run as your mayoral candidate, and I hope to serve as your next mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, also, you heard about the Massa I mean. Do you have any message for that? Yeah, right after this, I don't know when this is gonna be aired, but right after this, I will be standing in solidarity with each and every one of you at the art gallery. We're meeting in about half an hour. Massa passed away at the age of 22. That is the same age as my eldest daughter, Maryam. She lives in every one of us. The hope and the dreams that Massa had lives in each and every one of us. My heart is with you all and I will be physically standing in solidarity and marching with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it for um, joining us and dedicating your time. Uh, thank you uh, for watching Torange Media and also listening to Torange Radio. Please keep in touch with 604-655-7070 and hope to see you all on October 15th. Thank you so much and have a great day.